Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christer, and today I want to take a look at another one of the brand new audio effects in Ableton Live 11, which is the Spectral Resonator. And just like the Spectral Time, this is going to be another effect that's going to be doing with Spectral Processing, which is a really interesting way of dividing up your frequencies and doing different kinds of effects to those frequencies that takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around, but can create some really interesting, really off the wall kinds of sounds. So let's go ahead and dive right into it and take a look at what you can do with it. So right off the bat, the Spectral Resonator is a resonator, which means it's going to take an incoming audio signal and it's going to add new harmonics to it to generally take something that's very percussive and make it a little bit more tonal. So if you've ever used either the resonator device or Corpus, this is going to be a fairly similar concept, but a brand new take on it, especially with Corpus, because Corpus is up until now the only audio effect in live that has a MIDI input, so you can tune it. The Spectral Resonator also comes with that. So if you've used either of these two devices, this should feel fairly familiar. Uh, but if you haven't, this is an excellent kind of processing to do specifically on things like percussion, because we take the rhythm of our percussion and make it sound more harmonic. So without any effects on it, I'm going to be using a bunch of percussive loops. Something that just sounds like that. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Spectral Resonator, and you're going to hear, once I turn the dry wet up, It's going to be generating new frequencies uh, that's to be triggered by the volume of the incoming signal, as well as some of the frequencies of the incoming signal. So first off, we can choose to tune either just in hertz or in actual notes. So we can pitch this to be in key with our song. And then most importantly over here, we have the decay as well as the uh, high filter damp and the low filter damp. So as you turn the decay up, it's going out to resonate for a longer. Or be very quick and choppy. Both sound really cool depending on what you're going for. As you turn the HF damp up, it's going to reduce your high frequencies. So more low frequencies. As you turn the LF damp up, it's going to reduce the low frequencies. So between those, you can get uh, lots of different kinds of sounds. And pay attention because depending on what your decay is, these will do more or less. Usually if you have less decay, these make much less of a difference. But if you have a longer decay, you're going to hear them even more. Like that. We also have this stretch control. You can see in our little spectral analyzer, we can see our low frequencies down here, mid frequencies up here, and high frequencies up here. This will actually stretch them out. So if I turn this up. You can see we're gonna have more frequencies up there. If I turn it down. Everything goes way down. If I turn it way down, kind of becomes nothing. And then we also have this shift control here. And this is really interesting. I'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly how this works. This shift control, which is in semitones, is different than this control. So this is going to be changing the frequency of the harmonics. And this is going to, or the frequency of the signal going in to our resonator. And this is going to shift the actual harmonics themselves. I'm not entirely sure. They definitely sound different. If I were to, for example, uh, pitch this up by 12 semitones, it's going to sound different than pitching this up by 12 semitones. So that's going to sound different than pitching this up and down. And from what it sounds like, this is controlling, like I said, the, the MIDI note going into the resonator, and this is controlling how these harmonics are kind of shifting them up and down, which is pretty cool. And then over here, we have three different effects we can toss on our spectral processing. We can use chorus. This is going to add a little bit of that kind of thickening, thickening, widening sound that you expect from a chorus. So here it is without it. You can hear it moving up and down. And then it's controlling the speed of it moving up and down. And then we also have a pitch control. So if I turn this up, this will also adjust the rate of the pitch. So it acts kind of like a vibrato plus a chorus as I turn this up to four semitones is the maximum. So 
So this rate controls both the pitch modulation as well as the chorus modulation. The wander is going to be just like the chorus, but it's going to add a little bit more randomization to it. Which sounds like that. And then we have the granular, which it's going to add some kind of granular processing to your harmonics. I'm not entirely sure the science or the math behind how this works. What I do know is that if you get your settings just right, it sounds just like a wind chime. So you get these cool interesting wind chime sounds which can be really pretty. Honestly, I'm really excited about this. I feel like wind chimes are often really underrepresented in electronic music, so I'm glad that I have a quick, easy way to make some cool, interesting wind chime noises. Uh, I think they can be really pretty, especially if you get your settings just right. Uh, we can also change the number of harmonics right here. It maxes out at 256. Let's give this a little bit more. But you can make it less resonant by turning this down all the way down to one. Keep in mind if the less harmonics you have, the less a lot of these controls do. Like things like your stretch and your shift don't really do as much when you have less harmonics. Uh, and then lastly, we have an input volume and then we have a unison, so we can widen this up by adding some unison up to eight voices. So as you can see, uh, it, it takes the volume of the percussion I'm sending through it, it's going to resonate, and we can do a bunch of different kinds of processing to that resonance. However, this gets a lot more interesting once we get into the MIDI input. So instead of it just picking a note and playing that one note, which is, sounds kind of cool, we can do interesting stuff again, especially with granular, playing lots of different sounds there. Uh, I can actually have a MIDI input. They can receive MIDI notes from a different track, so I can pitch it up and down. And you'll see that when I switch from internal to MIDI, the Frequency control becomes a transposition control. So let's go ahead and I've got some MIDI notes here, just super basic notes. So now it's being pitched up and down based off of whatever MIDI notes I send to it. Uh, and then I can transpose it here if I want to. I can go like up an octave. effects that way. And it resonates. On top of that, we can switch from mono, mono to poly. And this actually, I think, in general makes it sound a lot better. Even though I'm only sending it a monophonic signal, I'm only sending it one MIDI note at a time, it gets you a little bit more uh, diversity in harmonics, which I think sounds a bit better than this a lot of the time. So just for this example, let's try out a few different clips of different rhythms just to see how this affects our sound. And here it is, I turn the dry wet down. Again, you get a lot of really cool, fun stuff out of this. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, just to give some context, let's toss a beat on here, just a quick uh, boots and pants.
So just in some really brief experimentation with this, I feel like I can do a lot more with this than I can with just the regular resonator. I feel like Corpus is really kind of designed for more like real world kind of resonating sounds, which I think works great. Uh, so if you like Corpus, if you used that before and you want something a little bit more experimental and kind of you know off the beaten path, Spectral Resonator is going to be excellent for you. So that is it for the Spectral Resonator. Just like the Spectral Time, it's a little bit weird. It takes a little bit to wrap your head around it exactly on what's going on with it, but it's really, really fun to play around with. If you're into experimental sound design and just making weird noises, this is an awesome, awesome effect, and I'm really excited it's here, and I'm really excited to play around with it a little bit more and see what I can come up with. So hopefully you enjoyed watching that, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel. We have more videos coming up about more Ableton Live 11 features, as well as other just general music production related tips and tricks coming as well. So keep an eye out for that. New videos are coming every Monday and Thursday, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.